my name's Dr Ingrid Visser and I run the Orca Research Trust in New Zealand. I've been doing that since 1992 and I completed my PhD on the New Zealand Orca. That was the first PhD ever and remains the only PhD on New Zealand Orca. Before I started my research, we had no idea how many there were, where they were going, what they were feeding on. And now we've got a little bit of an idea. There's less than 200 of them. Uh, they seem to spend most of their time, if not all of their time, around New Zealand, and they specialise in feeding on sharks and rays. So on a daily basis, the Orca Research Trust revolves naturally around orca and anything to do with them. So it's going out on the water to study them out in the field. It's also writing scientific articles, trying to help legislation being passed to protect them. But it's also involved with rescuing them when they get stuck on the beach. I've got an 0800 toll-free number set up, that's 0800 Sea Orca, so if people see the orca they can call me. And sometimes those are calls about whales and dolphins or animals that need rescuing and also about orca sightings. And then I launch my boat, I go out and I find the animals and obviously if they need rescuing we do that. If they don't need rescuing then it's a matter of collecting the data. And that involves a number of different things. First up I do photo identification and that allows me to see which individuals are there and who's hanging out with who. And then I also look at their overall behaviour. Are they feeding, are they sleeping, are they travelling, are they socialising, things like that. And I make hydrophone recordings, I do video, and if the conditions are right, so it's good visibility and the animals aren't travelling too fast, then I also get in the water and I swim with them and film them underwater. People often think that I'm crazy to swim with the orca, but despite the fact that there's been hundreds of attacks in captivity and even three fatalities, in the wild there's never ever been a verified attack of orca having a go at humans. So I don't think that it's that crazy. And I've known these animals for more than 20 years now, so I know them as individuals and that helps. Typically I hear about a stranded orca from a call on the orca hotline and then it's all go. The New Zealand orca have the highest rate of orca strandings in the world and I believe that that comes about because they're actually hunting for rays in very, very shallow water. So they make mistakes basically and they'll come into the water chasing the ray and then they get stuck and sometimes they get off by themselves and sometimes we have to help them. So it's a bit like being an occupational hazard, if you like. As soon as he was in deep enough water, he knew that he could help and he was just going nuts. Woo!
see your big teeth. I see your big teeth. Come on. Come on. Hello. 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 <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> if you think about how intelligent orca are, it's something that's a little bit hard to put your finger on to define it in human terms, but certainly in terms of how they relate to each other, they socially communicate, uh, their culture, the way they hunt. These are very, very intelligent animals. And a lot of people think of them, oh, killer whales, but they're really not. They're the largest of the dolphin family and they are incredibly gentle and uh, very demonstrative with each other. There's a lot of social contact with each other, touching each other when they're swimming, and they do a lot of things like capturing food and then sharing it with the others in their groups. So when I set up the Orca Research Trust, one of the things that I wanted to be sure of was that there was an educational component to what we were doing. I wanted the public to know more about these animals and what they could do to protect them. And as part of that, one of the things that I wanted to find out was how are these animals affected by humans? A lot of people view New Zealand as a clean and green place, but sadly that's not actually the case. We have a legacy of chemicals that have been used in agriculture and are still being used today. Some of those come from agricultural runoff, some of them come from runoff within the cities, and some of them come from leaching from dumps, where we go and dump all of our rubbish, and then there is uh, the rain, and that gets into the streams, and that comes down into the harbours, and it makes it into the oceans. Given that the New Zealand orca specialise in feeding on rays, which are often in these shallow harbours, they accumulate a lot of toxins through the food chain and New Zealand orca actually have the highest level of toxins recorded for any animal in the southern hemisphere. It's pretty scary. What that's going to alert us to and perhaps allow us to be able to implement is better legislation to control these chemicals so that we're not going to be putting more of them into the ocean and we can do a better job of protecting the ocean. Up to starboard, he's got a ray right now. of all the pollutants and contaminants from the harbour. So this will be really good to analyse and see what pollutants are being passed on to the orca. Whew. One of the issues that orca face is that they are such remarkable animals and because of that, people want to see them up close and personal. So there are other people who want to make a profit from that. They capture the orca from the wild and they rip them out of their families and they dump them into these concrete tanks and make them perform tricks. People pay to go and see that. They're brainwashed into thinking that this is a really good thing to see and a good thing to do. It's family entertainment. And they just don't seem to realize how much these animals suffer. So one of the things that I'm trying to do now is help educate the public and make the public realize that this is not acceptable anymore. This is something that should be part of our history. It's not something that should be part of our future. We really, as individuals, need to make that effort. And every one of us can by saying that we will not buy a ticket to any place that keeps a whale or dolphin in captivity.
In the past, the Orca Research Trust has been able to do some really remarkable things, including managing to change the endangered status of the animals here in New Zealand. They were classified as common, and through our research we've been able to show that they're actually nationally critical. That means that there's less than 200 of them around New Zealand. But there's been other things. We've rescued a number of individuals, many of whom we still see, which is really great. And we hope to be able to continue on with that research. And that's really why we need support, because we don't get funding from the government and we rely solely on donations coming in from the public. So I've been studying the orca since 92 officially. And in that time as a scientist, I've seen how the public have become better educated about the animals and they want to do more to protect them and obviously the ocean. And long term, I'd like to see that continue and expand. I think as humans, we're coming to understand that we can have a big impact on what's going on in the ocean and therefore with animals like orca. So if we can do something to reduce that impact, I think that would be a really, really good start.